The 2017 Convention Days weekend is coming up on July 13th through 16th, 2017, and this year also marks the state of New York's commemoration of 100 years of women's full voting rights. And as part of the celebration, the world premiere of a one-woman play about Dr. Mary Walker, who's the only woman to receive the Medal of Honor, will take place at different venues in Seneca Falls throughout the weekend. And the play was written and directed by Lloyd J. Schwartz. Now, Lloyd has an extensive career in all media at age 25. He was the youngest producer in network television. He, along with his father, Sherwood Schwartz, who you might remember as the creator of The Brady Bunch, uh, were one of the only, if not the only, father-son producing teams in television. With his wife, Barbara Lloyd, co-founded the storybook Little Theater in Los Angeles 31 years ago and has written, composed, and or directed all 18 of the original productions there. He received one of the inaugural Red Carpet Award from Women in Theater, and Lloyd and his wife have been honored by the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives, and the City of Los Angeles for their contributions to the youth of Los Angeles. So um, Lloyd J. Schwartz will be in Seneca Falls for Convention Days, obviously, to premiere this play, but right now we have him on the line via Los Angeles, California, to uh, kind of tell us a little bit about what we can expect. So uh, Lloyd, welcome to the interview. How are you doing this morning? I am doing very well, and it's so glad. I'm so glad that Dr. Seneca Falls. Yeah, we're excited that you're coming, and obviously excited about this great um, new production, it, which uh, will, it'll be exciting to premiere the play here in Seneca Falls, but also to shed some light on De Dr. Mary Walker. Um, so why don't we start out by just tell us a little bit about uh, Dr. Walker and, and her accomplishments. Well, it's it's amazing to, to uh, discover a, a woman who's done who's first to do so many things. She's the first woman to wear pants. She's the, she's the first woman to take Obey out of the wedding ceremony, not to take her husband's name. And of course, the most famous thing she did, she was the only woman ever to win the Congressional Medal of Honor. There are 3,600 people, all men, except for Dr. Mary Walker, and it's just she was a she was a woman who just did what she thought was right. And uh, she went right ahead, and 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 uh, I am excited when I found out about her. And I'm excited to have written the plan. I'm more excited to bring it to the the women's um, the, the center of all women's movements and things, which is Seneca Falls. We're going to do it in, in in I think a few venues back there, and so I really hope uh, your listeners can come see this play with a wonderful actress named Kathy Barnes, who I've been working with for years. So now you've written historical plays about Teddy Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, and John Wilkes Booth. And a lot of people um, recognize those names. Um, a lot of people haven't, like Dr. Mary Walker, not a household name, despite her tremendous accomplishments. Um, right. Why do you think that is? Why do you think uh, she's the only woman to ever win a Medal of Honor? And, and is there any reason why you might think that, that she would be overlooked or are women in general for, for something like the Medal of Honor? Well, first of all, well, not there, that many women have been in combat, and you have to be True. in combat to win the, win the Medal of Honor. So there's a certain rationale to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, sadly, I think other women will get them because uh, now women are more in combat. She was during the it was during the Civil War. Um, why we don't know is so much about her. It's it's a fascinating. It's actually part of the play. Um, she was kind of opposed to uh, Susan B. Anthony, who is the the patron saint of the women's movement, and both of them had really uh, reasons for why they did what they did. And I think Mary Walker believed, according to the Declaration of Independence, that all men, meaning all men and women, are created equal, therefore they should have the same rights. And so when everybody was looking to get the, the women's uh, suffrage uh, amendment, uh, Mary Walker said, no, no, we already have those rights, we just have to win, we have to get people to let us vote without an amendment because we're already equal, which is really a very legitimate position, mm -hmm. but because the the... the all the motion was going the other way. She kind of got pushed to the side. Yeah, so um, now you mentioned Kathy Barnes is going to be the actress who's portraying Dr. Walker. Um, tell us a little bit about Kathy and why she was chosen uh, to, uh, to take on the part. Well, she, she had a lot of the qualities. I've worked with Kathy on two or three different plays in Los Angeles, 
And uh, well, as soon as I started talking to her about it and I was starting to tell people what I was doing, she just lightened, I mean, her old face just got so happy that she could, st- you know, that she could possibly play this role. And then she started researching along with me and she's been more of a collaborator as well as an actress. And uh, I think if, if you come see her, you're gonna see a lot of those qualities that, that Mary Walker has. So. As, you, as I mentioned, you, you've written so many historical plays uh, previously. Um, were there any unique challenges to this particular play to write? Was there less information available, I guess, about Dr. Uh, Walker than there would have been Teddy Roosevelt, and was that a challenge? Well, sir, certainly. Well, it made it a little easier because I didn't have to read as many things. <laughs> But there was, I think I read, you know, seven or eight uh, books and articles. It was funny because I was all just, I just didn't know anything about her. I was, I have a subscription to like a U.S. History magazine and there was just one page on her and I go, what? What? I better find out more, which led me to read this book and this book. And uh, most of the time I was research or something, I find like a kid's book to start with. And there's a funny little kid's book about her. So I just kind of get a feeling and then I started getting into the more serious research. And with every and with every every one of the things I've done, there's there's conflicting opinions. So what I try to do in my and when I my history work is obviously find dramatic the dramatic through line, but also I try never to put anything in there that isn't historically accurate. That's a a fault of a lot of Hollywood movies. They sure it was kind of based based upon. Well, no, I think you're going to get a real view of who this woman is and why she is so it's such an exciting personality. So how how long does it take you to uh, compose a play like this, uh, from just just from the script perspective or writing the script? I would say um, this one took about a year, and and, and just with, you know, I read a lot of different things and I just kind of walk around and get a feeling of it. I'm doing other things at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like we just we just closed the, the one man booth show out here, John Wilkes booth show, and so I had to kind of balance my time and then I'd rehearse that in the, like in the morning and then work with Kathy in the afternoon or the other way around. So uh, it, keeps, it, keeps me, it keeps me pretty busy. It also keeps me uh, talking about a lot of things that other people don't know about, which mm-hmm. may probably bores some people. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, just, I, just ho- I just hope that uh, this play will enlighten and, and entertain people. And I, as I said, look really forward to bringing it to Seneca Falls. That's just, that's just a, a very exciting, thrilling thing for us. So I, 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 and I, I'll be there. So please, if anybody sees the play and, and, and the different venues in Seneca Falls, please come up and talk to me about it because I would be thrilled to uh, get into those kind of discussions. Sure. I think uh, that a lot of folks in Seneca Falls will be excited to learn more about Dr. Walker, but also excited that, that you'll be here in town. Um, you've had a diverse career in television and theater. Right. And, um, of course, a lot of people... Uh, know your father mainly because they watch. If you watch the Brady Bunch, it's his name is always on the screen right at the beginning and the end of every episode. That was such a popular um, sitcom. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about um, projects that you and your father worked together on and, and what that was like? Uh, it, it was very exciting. I started working with him back in 1965. He did a show. We did Gilligan's Island, and then um, okay. I worked with him after that, producing all the TV movies of Gilligan's Island. And then when we he started Brady Bunch, I was there every step of the way. And by the end of that series, I was writing them all and executive producing. Here, here's one fact that that uh, unfortunately for me, it might be the thing that I'm going to be most famous for in my life, which is. I threw the ball that hit Marsha Brady in the nose in that episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I hope that um, I hope maybe Doctor Play about Independence, the play about Doctor Mary Walker, might uh, surpass that in terms of my fame. <laughs> so. so you, you it was really an exciting time in television and media in general because you mentioned Gilligan's Island. That was a, started out as a black and white production and then so you were really involved during the time when um tv went from black and white to color and uh it just must have been a really interesting time to uh, be involved in in something like that oh yeah oh yeah i mean i i was involved with let me see uh uh i worked as a network exec on happy days the vernon shirley threes mm-hmm. company what's happening I written for Alice, uh, A Team, A Team, Baywatch, um, 
Dad and I created uh, Harper Valley PTA. Mm-hmm. Uh, some, you know, I also produced the Brady Bunch movie. Very, oh, yeah. The, the, the sequel to that. And so I, I, I've been very lucky in my career, whereas I've been able to get involved in, in all the different media, you know, to theater and movies and, and, uh, and television in every form. I just, we just did an off-Broadway musical called The Babies, um, about four adults playing babies. And uh, we're going to do that again in, in the fall. So I, I, I always think of my life as kind of summer camp. <laughs> I do arts and crafts. You know, well, I tell you, those that the list of shows you just mentioned were, um, you know, all of all of my favorites in in right. uh, growing up, especially um, used to. And and I guess uh, one thing I'd like to ask you is, back then, um, you know, you had your three channels on your TV across America. Right. So ever so, when you were working on those shows, um, there wasn't as much noise or competition, I suppose for um, the eyeballs and attention of the viewers. Um, nowadays, it's just um, anybody that's involved in media, you almost have to carve out a, a niche for yourself. There's just, you uh, outside of the networks, you have all the streaming services and um, you know the, all the movies that, that are produced and now available in the, the internet productions and, and the hundreds of cable TV channels, it's just so different. So when you decide to do a project now, it seems like it might be more of just uh, what interests you than than trying to find something that resonates with, uh, you know, the society as a whole. Like how, when you when you decide what you're going to work on next and, and be involved in, uh, what are the types of things you take into consideration? Well, the most important consideration for me is where is it going to be? What platform is it going to be shown on? Mm-hmm. And then I have to tailor whatever I'm doing for that medium. An example here with the, the Mary Walker play, this is a one-woman uh, play for theater. So the, the project tells me what it should be. I've been fortunate to go into all of the different, the different, the different media, but the project itself has to tell me what it, what it should be. Now, when you mention the, the history of television in those days, uh, the shares audience, thirty three percent of all people watching were watching like Brady Bunch. Well, now maybe three percent of the network is watching. Right. But the, the, when you trade the idea of everybody watching together and then and going to school or work the next day and talking about a show they saw, mm-hmm. we've traded that. It's and now and now it's you can be your own programmer and watch what you want to watch. But there's a place for everything. Right. You used to have to. You just have to, to fashion a show for just those three networks. I can come up with anything I want, and there's a place for it. Yeah, right. And I think that that, 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 that for a creative person, that's very exciting. But you just you just lose that, that common thing. You're probably, the only time we all watch the same thing together, maybe it's like the Super Bowl. <laughs> sure, but, yeah. No, that's, that's an interesting point. Um, yeah. You, uh, anybody that's willing to create something, there is a place to uh, disseminate it and and find that target audience and get it out there for people who are interested. Where, um, you know, back in the days of the three networks uh, kind of having a monopoly on the television screen, um, you know, you had to, you had to uh, have a the golden key, I suppose. To, to reach people, where now, if you're a content creator of any kind, you can create it, and, um, it, and it'll stand on its own merits, uh, depending on what platform you can find. So that's pretty. I think interesting. it's a very, it's a, I think it's a very exciting time now, very exciting. I and and you know the the, the technologies too. I mean, anybody can make a show themselves and then put it on YouTube. Sure. So, I mean, I just, I am just, uh, I'm, I'm a little jealous of the people starting into the business now. Because I, I'm, I'm of a certain age where I don't think I'm going to be the future future. But I have sons that are doing that. And mm-hmm. uh, they're very successful now. Up there, and they're exploring all of those things. So it's, um, it's great. But uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy about all these things. And um, as I said, back to, to Mary Walker, I'm just so excited to come to San, uh, Seneca Falls. Because I've heard about it and read about it. And now I get a chance to see it myself. Well, we're excited to have you, and again, that'll be um, July thirteenth through sixteenth. Um, the play uh, is does the, the play have a title? Yeah, it's called Independence. Independence, okay, but it's a, a one woman play uh, starring Catherine Barnes about Dr. Mary Walker, the only woman to receive the Medal of Honor, and it will be at locations 
um, throughout Seneca Falls, throughout Convention Days weekend, Convention Days website, uh, conventiondays.com. And for more information on the play, you can call 315-568-5838. But we'll be sharing more information here at FingerLakes1.com about the play um, in the upcoming two weeks leading into convention day so uh, lloyd i really appreciate you taking some time to talk to us and and we're excited to see you here in seneca falls when when do you get in do you, do you have your travel itinerary set yet yeah I, I come in i think wednesday of that week and then i have a rehearsal on, on the thursday and then i get to participate i think there's some events they have us participating in along the way and i'm thrilled about it i really also want to thank seneca falls and the and the museum for inviting us and um i couldn't be happier about it all well, um, I'll stop by and say hello when I see you, and I appreciate you sp- taking some time to talk to us, and uh, safe travels, and uh, good luck with the uh, show. And we're, we're all excited to see it here premiering in Seneca Falls. You got it. Thank you so much. Sure. Have a great one. Bye-bye.